there's been a lot of talk since GTA 6 was announced, with rumors flying all over. But hey, here's a rundown of confirmed stuff like vehicles, items, weapons, and features for the game. Now, the official release of the game is still a good few years away. Rockstar Games is really putting in the work to make this game top notch. But thanks to a leak, we've got some inside info. We're talking cars, new physics, main characters like Lucia and Jason, map locations, a massive open world, tons of stuff to do in game, and a bunch of weapons you'll get to use. We've also learned about better AI for non player characters, some RPG elements, and cool new gameplay features. All this has got the gaming community buzzing about what GTA 6 will bring when it finally drops. Let's dive into the primary video clips, making rounds on social platforms, showcasing mission gameplay, and offering insights into Rockstar Games' vision for GTA 6. Among the widely shared footage is a mission featuring Lucia, the game's playable character, and a Latina protagonist attempting to rob Hank's Waffles, a diner. During this early test phase, the non-player characters lack distinct facial features and bear a dummy-like appearance, humorously dubbed in-game as such. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. The NPC's responses are influenced by Lucia's aggressive actions, with various animations depicting the fear evoked by the robbery, akin to the dynamic NPC reactions seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In the diner heist, Lucia has the option to aim her handgun at a hostage, providing players the choice to either rob or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Managing the hostage adds depth to criminal activities in the game. Jason, the white male protagonist, is also involved in the robbery, allowing players to interact with both characters during the encounter. Jason urges Lucia to act swiftly and escape without a trace, hinting at a relationship reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde, aligning with previous leaks regarding the game's storyline. The character's appearance bears similarities to actors Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from The Place Beyond the Pines, though it remains uncertain if the narrative will mirror the movie's plot. Lucia and Jason appear to be in their late twenties, and the game incorporates a character-switching mechanism seamlessly activated through the controller's D-pad. As the police arrive, Lucia can menace another hostage, leading to a showdown with law enforcement outside. The intricate design of the outdoor area suggests a setting modeled after northern Florida, characterized by lush vegetation. As Lucia and Jason make their getaway, they rack up two wanted stars but avoid a shootout, deftly maneuvering around parked cars before commandeering a police cruiser. This early mission stage is apparent with tutorial-like cues, one highlighting improvements in police AI, where law enforcement remembers vehicles linked to illegal actions. The scene wraps up with Lucia driving the police car, Jason reassuring her of their ability to shake off the cops. However, their escape comes to an abrupt halt, with an unintended collision at an outdated car wash. The early footage reveals a minimap reminiscent of Grand Theft Auto V, with icons possibly denoting missions from unfamiliar characters labeled WM and YJ. As they ascend to the VIP second floor, Dre interacts with DJ Tip, who appears irked by drink delays. A brief spat implies Tip's unpopular status. Dre moves on, and the clip ends. It's important to note that these clips depict early development stages, subject to changes throughout the game's progress. Another intriguing leak spills details on over 500 in-game events, encounters, and Easter eggs. While we can't cover them all, here are a few highlights. Various events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and big cat mansions offer diverse experiences within the game's universe. There's talk of missing tourists, yard sales offering new clothes, an event resembling insurance fraud from Saints Row, a mysterious voice in a storm drain, potentially a nod to Pennywise, a multi-location Bonnie and Clyde mystery, and a workout challenge hinting at the return of fitness activities. Additionally, within Grand Theft Auto 6, players can stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and the prospect of crazy golf gameplay. Based on insights gathered from the GTA forum, GTA 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times larger than GTA 5, providing players with a vast and immersive environment to explore. The game draws inspiration from the successful approach seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising a meticulously crafted open world with captivating mysteries that elevate the gaming experience. GTA 6's development footage showcases recognizable real-life locations from Florida, such as the Homestead Miami Speedway, reimagined as the Port Gel Horn Racetrack, along with places like Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Moreover, the inclusion of the 1,000 Museum, a high-rise residential condominium in Miami, demonstrates Rockstar's dedication to detail. A metro map mirroring Miami's real version adds to the immersive nature of the game world. The presence of lush grasslands and vegetation hints at potential expansion into Georgia. 
although this aspect remains speculative until officially confirmed. The Miami Beach Police Department's resemblance to the Vice City Neighborhood Police Station shows how Rockstar brings creativity into their world designs. Of course, with any early info, we're waiting for official confirmations to see how these elements fit into the final game. Until then, the mystery around Grand Theft Auto 6 will definitely keep fans excited for its release. Now, let's take a look at the primary locations featured in GTA 6. Ambrosia comprises Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades, or Grass Rivers, Fairyland, and Fairyland Forest offer distinct settings. The Keys region includes East Key, Low Key, and additional spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee encompasses a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami feature establishments such as gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn distinguishes itself with detailed spots like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and more. Red Hill showcases a forest, South Beach offers a boardwalk, gym, hotel, Ocean Drive, and Park, while South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac. Vice Beach encompasses Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. Miscellaneous locations such as an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World enrich the gaming world. Recent leaks from this week strongly suggest that Alexandra Christina Ekavari might be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice in a demo reel closely matches the leaked clips of Lucia's dialogues, hinting at her likely portrayal of the character. Throughout this breakdown, we've covered loads of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, diving into different aspects of the game. It was important to cover everything we know about the game so far, and while we're eagerly waiting for it, it might still be a couple of years before we get our hands on it. Let's kick off by highlighting some cool discoveries from the leaked clips, focusing on new features and gameplay details revealed. In one scene, Jason and his pals are chilling by an in-ground pool in a modest neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. Their banter brings in playful references to Jay Norris's demise showcasing that classic Grand Theft Auto humor fans love. Lucia and Jason are shown in animation tests doing different actions like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crash physics on an overpass. The highway signs on Interstate 97 mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another interesting scene, Jason finds a shipping container filled with stacks of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips reveal tweaks being made to a vehicle's interior, hinting at potential new designs or customization options options for players. Throughout the clips, interactions with NPCs in the open world are demonstrated, including characters taking selfies, which adds depth to the game's environment and immersion. There's a moment where Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, showcasing unique animations for characters reacting to being shot. A notable find in the clips is a jetpack, previously leaked by Tom Henderson which is seen inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game features parody social media logos like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters also sport different hairstyles, with details like Lucia's visible bra under her shirt, adding realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways during combat, adding a different dimension to fights. Additionally, Jason is seen twirling his rifle in the air, while another character in a parking lot shoots at him with their pistol held sideways. The leaked clips also reveal early police AI testing, with NPCs showing better cover usage in shootouts. There's a scene where Jason holds up a diner worker with an assault rifle, and while there are dialogue options similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, they seem placeholder for now. Also, Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the series. There's a scene in a thrift or antique shop that allows for robbery, potentially serving as a spot to sell stolen items, adding depth to the gameplay. Another feature borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability to pick up and carry bodies, which adds complexity to gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2's influence can be seen in several other aspects of this game too. The game brings in several RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, giving players a deeper gameplay experience. References to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals promise enjoyable cycling activities. The leaked clips mention a bunch of weapons, from firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use equipment such as flashlights, binoculars, lockpicks, and more. 
Additionally, players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel being one of the options. There's even a pool party with live music for players to check out. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds suggest diverse environments to explore. The weapon wheel system, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, limits the number of weapons and items players can carry. Lucia can carry a loot bag, possibly used for robberies or stealing from different places. The inventory system allows players to carry health kits and other items for temporary boosts, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. The clips hint at animations like Overdose, suggesting unique actions or events in the game. There are indications of horses and horse riding mechanics, possibly inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is full of accessible places, including motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Little details like grabbing a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall vibe. A cool feature is the ability to shoot while swimming, adding a new layer to combat situations. All these diverse and interesting elements together promise an immersive and fun gaming experience in Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into the cars of GTA 6. Shout out to the GTA forums for putting together this info. You can find links below to join the discussions. There's a bunch of confirmed vehicles. We're talking the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and a car that looks like an early 90s Buick Skylark. Then there are some new cars without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a Chevy Malibu from 2016 onwards, a Chevy Sonic, and a Honda Accord from 2018 to 2022. And you know how Rockstar rolls, they'll give these cars their own funny names like they always do. There's more on the list too. Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a Toyota Rav4 from 2018 onwards, with a mix of Lexus NX style, and a Mercedes Grill, Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, Vapid Speedo, HV Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Saber, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. Moreover, gamers can anticipate a range of vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 6, including the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unidentified Albany vehicle drawing inspiration from a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, an unknown Asian sedan, a Ferrazzi or Ferrochi, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Feudo, a Benson NF890, Buffalo without a sports bumper, and the Steenier and Landstalker. This extensive lineup promises an immersive and varied driving experience for players within the game. It's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's new found support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, the reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment. 
where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom servers gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA six inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. 
The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators, and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. Yet here we are in the waiting room until GTA 6 steps into the limelight.